Hey, it's James Fathers Rights and Resources, hashtag how I got cussy. I'm working on a letter that I'm writing for a friend and going through the rules of professional conduct. You guys tolerate your attorneys playing and using you and committing malpractice and stealing your money. You tolerate it for months and months and pay them $5,000, $10,000 a month every time they want a new retainer because you went to court or they talked to you in 50 emails and talked about nothing. You let them delay and procrastinate. And here's what the commentary on the rule of professional conduct 1.3 regarding diligence says. Now this is Florida's rule. Florida Bar. They have a... You know, every, uh, the American Bar Association has a numbering system. 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4. Florida Rules of Regulation of the Florida Bar, Chapter 4. These are incorporated... What they do is they take the 1.1 through like it goes to like 8.4 or something. They put all those and slip them under chapter 4. So it's 4-1.3. But in most states, if you look up rule, RPC, if you're in Minnesota, Rules of Professional Conduct for Attorneys. And then you go and look up 1.3. Here's the one that says diligence. You see that diligence? It says the attorney shall act with promptness and diligence. Your attorney is delaying, goofing around, half-assing it, and not being diligent. Then it says here in the commentary, in the commentary, and I didn't realize this, I forgot about it. Perhaps no professional shortcoming is more widely resented than procrastination. A client's interests are often adversely affected by the passage of time or the change of conditions. In extreme cases, when a lawyer overlooks a statute of limitations, the client's legal position may be destroyed. Your attorney's sitting around, goofing around, and delaying your case. Or, like in a lot of cases, a parent's in contempt, and your attorney's not filing a contempt. Oh, let's wait. Oh, let's wait. Let's wait for another contempt. Let's Go do a contempt now and give him the slap on the wrist in the morning. Then do another contempt and say, hey, the slap on the wrist didn't work. Find him in contempt. Then do another contempt, then go for full custody. The hell are you waiting on, sitting there letting this con artist con you? Even when the client's interested are not affected in substance, however, unreasonable delay can cause a client needless anxiety. So, oh, dang it. That attorney is causing you needless anxiety by delaying. Delay can cause needless anxiety and undermine confidence in the lawyer. A lawyer's duty to act with reasonable... Sorry about this thing popping up. I don't even know how to deal with that stuff. A lawyer's duty to act with reasonable promptness, however, does not preclude from whatever. Okay, so, so why are you tolerating this? This is legal malpractice. Do you tolerate somebody working on your car and doing a tune-up, and then your engine's busted, you drive off the lot, and your engine shuts down and dies? Or a transmission overhaul, and it gets stuck in gear? And then you go back, and they say you have to pay for it all over again. Then you go drive off the lot, and, you, and then it breaks, you have to pay for it all over again. Do you tolerate that? No, you would never, ever, ever, ever ever tolerate anybody saying, pay me again for my failure to provide you a service. Yet you keep feeding these attorneys money and you guys get mad at me because I charge for my time and I'm giving you 10 times the information and I care more about your case than you do. Do you care about your kids or not? What are you doing? Do you live to please and satisfy and make your attorney happy? Or are they providing a certain, they're making 400 bucks an hour. You wouldn't tolerate somebody working 30 bucks an hour or somebody cutting your hair and doing it wrong or giving your, or going to McDonald's. You would chew them out if your fries are cold. That's what, 10 bucks. How are you spending thousands and thousands of dollars on an attorney and tolerating the bull crap that I just showed you? The rules tell them that, that, that they are causing you anxiety. And you, that you call them up and say, hey, I, I, I want to know what's the status of my case. Look, just, I'll call you later. Stop bugging me. i got other cases to deal with. What? How do you tolerate this crap? You guys are your own worst enemy. I got cases where, you know, I remember cases where I, when I first came on board, I would micromanage a case. And I'm on board and I'm serving up and setting up everything. And all the person's got to do, all they got to do. And just show up at the hearing and consult with me and study the stuff that I'm talking about. We got the paperwork filed. We got everything set up. We got all the legal arguments. All this stuff. 
you guys are getting, or people like this that I'm talking about, are getting royal treatment from somebody like me for pennies on the dollar compared to an attorney who will screw you over. And then you'll tolerate this bullcrap from an attorney. And then some of these people that, like I said, they're getting royal treatment. It's like, think about, um, like, uh, you know, in the 50s and 60s when they had uh, burger joints and the girls would come with roller skates in the trays and they'd serve you at your car. I'm ba There's cases where I'm... I, I, I've been on case. This is why I can't. I can't handle doing stuff like this. You got to decide whether you're going to take advantage of this information and learn how to fight and grow some balls and get on the offensive or not. But, um, uh, it's almost like I'm driving up and serving everything to you right there at your window, and you won't roll it down. If you're one of these people who like. You got all this stuff, and you're complaining that it's hard to do this little bit of effort. And the, I got all kinds of pro says who like will have one consult with me. I won't talk to them for several months, and they they did their trial already, or they're getting ready for trial. We have another consultation, and they do everything I tell them to, or everything that we talk about, or everything that that works for guys. And they go in and kill everybody and destroy them, and they come back and tell me I got custody, I got fifty fifty. After just a couple of consults with me. Then I got got when the more I baby somebody and micromanage their case and help them out, the more their lazy ass doesn't want to fight. And you know, a lot of a lot of you guys are in the situation you are because you were lazy. You went out and got horny and then jammed up a jammed up a woman and got her pregnant. No 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 discretion, no self control, just going out and losing control. And then when it comes time to fight for your kid, no self control, no discipline, no effort. Now, I knew about this this commentary on the diligence thing. It's also in the American Bar Association's Rules of Professional Conduct. I knew about it. I've been talking crap to it, opposing attorneys and to judges for the, violating the code of judicial conduct for 20 years. I'll go in there and tell, I told my judge and, his, and my baby's mom's attorney, I told them in court papers, I finally figured it out. You guys hate my guts. And you are tag teaming me and you're teaming up against me because you personally don't like me. I finally figured out what it was. Now, my judge is mad at me because I got him reversed in the Court of Appeals. And then I told everybody at the courthouse that I got him reversed. And it was embarrassing to him. So that was part of his little vindictive vendetta against me. But <clears throat> I went in and said, you guys hate me because I date beautiful women and you both have hideously ugly wives. And it should have stung because they both had fat, ugly wives. And I do date, I have dated very beautiful women. And some of them have been, have given, written testimonies and they show their picture, you know, like my baby's mom is black. So a woman of color will write a picture and say, James isn't crazy. He's this and that, he's, you know, not this and that or whatever. I'm a woman, you know, whatever. And, uh, they'll, um, and anyway, I'll go in there and insult the judge and my baby's mom's attorney. And you guys are scared to cite the law. You guys are scared to tell what I just showed on the computer. Scared to tell your attorney what their obligation is. If you were coaching a basketball team and somebody tackled one of your players, would you be afraid to complain to the ref? Or would you ask the ref to follow the rules? And we're talking about you spending thousands of dollars on your attorney who won't do anything. Why do you tolerate this stuff? It's insane to me. I care more about your case and your kids than you do. I tell you guys stuff. I tell people stuff. All I've been getting the past all, all the past week feedback from people who say my attorney won't do this. I well, I told you to tell him this. Here's what the rule is. Here's what the law is. Well, he said this. Are you going to back down and quit? Like like you guys want me to magically stir up some potion and make it go away? You have to do it. It's your case. It's your life. What are you doing? There you go. Anyway, there you go. Here's another free tidbit of advice. You can, you know, I got a, I got a packets in my store where guys have gotten money back from their attorney, writing demand letter to their attorney for money back for committing malpractice. There's a freebie right there, RPC 1.3. I did a video on one, RPC 1 1.4 on my YouTube channel. You should check it out. If you got an attorney who's not communicating with you, go check it out and write him a letter and demand it. If you don't, then you're a big scaredy cat little pussy and doesn't care about your kid to fight for your kid because you want to appease your attorney who's going to walk away with a whole bunch of money and 
and be happy and fine, and you're left stuck with foot in the bill of not seeing your kid while not seeing your kid. Get on the offensive. 